Welcome to what I consider a fascinating subject about catacetinae and also a request from Jan Vries. And I am so happy that I can finally honor this request because the question was along the lines of wanting to know more about female and male blooms when it comes to catacetinae. And the only way I could really honor that request is having a catacetinae of the same name. This is Catacetum Jack of Diamonds. Bloom, female blooms, and then male blooms. And I thought that this combination would work best. So, Jan Vries, here is your video. I really hope that I can do it justice with information and footage of female blooms and anything else I might be pointing out to answer the question and talk about this remarkable evolutionary phenomena of how catacetinae have evolved throughout the millennia to get to this point, being the only genus in the orchid family that has two distinct blooms for the same orchid. As most of us know orchids in general have what are considered perfect flowers because they contain both female and male organs. Combined with the intricate patterning of the lip, petals and sepals, this combination makes attracting pollinators somewhat easier so that pollinia gets caught on the insect's back and either gets the bloom to self-pollinate because of all the activity of the insect while it searches for the nectar and the pollinia gets deposited into the column or the insect does not find what it is looking for in that bloom and moves on to the next one to try for more nectar and then ends up pollinating that bloom. Welcome to the orchid hobby. <laughs> there are always exceptions. Enter the orchid genus Catacetinae with around 166 described species. This genus is interesting in that individual plants produce either male or female flowers. What's more, the floral morphology of the individual sexes are so distinctly different from one another that some were originally described as distinct species. In fact, it was Charles Darwin, yay for Charles Darwin, it was Charles Darwin himself that first worked out that plants of the different sexes were indeed the same species. If it wasn't for Charles Darwin, my goodness, good old Darwin, he's at it again. But resolving the distinct floral morphology wasn't his only contribution to our understanding of these orchids. He also described their unique pollination mechanism, the details of which were so bizarre that Darwin was actually ridiculed by some scientists of the time. Wouldn't have been the first time, but it turns out that Darwin was right yet again. And that wouldn't have been the first time either. He nailed it again. Catacetum are pollinated by large euglossine bees, attracted to the male flowers by their incredible fragrance. The bees land on the lip and start to rummage around the flower. So just above the lip sit two hair-like structures. And when the bee contacts these hairs, another structure containing sacs of pollen called pollinia is launched towards the bee and a very, very sticky pad at the base ensures that once it hits the bee, it will stick tight. Now that is a force to be reckoned with because <laughs> the ejection of pollinia is quite remarkable with catacetinae as well. And for a bee, it feels like it has taken a hit. The bee then soon learns that the male flower isn't a nice place to visit, so they set off in search of a flower that doesn't actually pummel them. So when the bee visits the female flowers, the pollen sacs on their back slip into a perfect groove, et voila, pollination is achieved. It is said that the energy consumption for a catacetum to bloom out with female flowers is much higher than for it to bloom male blooms. So when a catacetum blooms female blooms, many growers are disappointed because the blooms are ugly. They look deformed. They are not as showy as the much more visually appealing male blooms. But consider this, when a catacetum blooms out with female blooms, then it should be a happy experience because the orchid would not do that if not all culture requirements were met to perfection. So <laughs> I have come to really appreciate the female blooms on my Jack of Diamonds because they are proof my orchid is living la vida. And as with everything else in nature, the male is always more showy, more flamboyant in order to impress the female. And that goes for the animal kingdom, 
but definitely you can see the difference between a male catacetum flower as opposed to the female ones if you prefer color as opposed to how well are you being able to cultivate your orchid. Just a reminder, female blooms will come when the orchid is 100% happy and all its requirements in our culture are met to perfection. So when you see female blooms, give yourself a pat on the back, enjoy the funky look of them, and know that you have made your catacetum very, very happy. But when it comes to seeing a spike growing, we also want to be able to somewhat anticipate what are we going to be confronted with? Will we get female or male blooms? So what I have noticed with my Jack of Diamonds is that starting a female spike as opposed to a male spike, the female spike has much more bulk to the structure, even as a nubbin before it actually grows out. It is fatter, it is chunkier, and then it is so much stiffer as well in its structure as it grows. The buds have a weird alien look about them. You may see that the buds look a lot greener, even if a male bud looks green, there's a different green about female buds. The male blooms grow on flimsier spikes, and even though the appearance of the buds may look similar in their early stages, the giveaway that these are male buds is the flimsier spike, and the protrusion of the bud's structure is not as predominant as you look at them, and much more tender to the touch as well. The female blooms are tough, the buds are tough, everything is rigid and very, very sturdy. And once they bloom out, they actually make a sound. If you were to tap on the little hood, it actually makes a sound, they are that strong. I could not detect a fragrance from my female blooms, never even managed to get a hint of it, but this male blooming is giving me very, very strong spearmint, the chewing gum spearmint, heavy, heavy on the mint with a note of sugar. It is not unpleasant, but it is potent. The freshness of the environment around this orchid as it is blooming is remarkable. I am incredibly thrilled to be able to smell a spearmint chewing gum package in my surroundings. There is no guessing. What is this? What could this be? Spearmint chewing gum. Delicious and very, very obvious. And if I hadn't mentioned it before, but catacetinae, catacetums are the only genus in the orchid family that grow female and male blooms on separate spikes during separate times of year. So in the past, my Jack of Diamonds, my first year with it, it had female blooms. And then six months later, it produced a male spike. Very obvious to see once again, the spike was thinner. I snapped it. And now the following year, I had female blooms as per the season, right on time. And then six months later, it started to develop these male spikes, which took approximately three months to bloom out. There is a similarity between a female spike and a male spike. The bud count will be the same, if not similar. I have never had more than five buds on my female spikes, and you can see that I have here five and six. Well, in the viewfinder, you will see I've got six, but I have another spike here off to the right that has five. So let's step back a little bit more, and you can see just how amazing this display is, even though precarious. I am very, very happy I didn't bust the spikes this year, or else Jan Vries would have had to wait a little bit longer, at least to honor the request from my side, even though the question may have already been answered in another video by another channel. So now after knowing that they all bloom separately and every blooming has a different gender, so to speak, imagine pollinating a catacetum. I would now have to harvest the male pollinia and store it for eight to 10 months. And then I have to hope for female blooms come June, July, and hope that the male pollinia that I have stored is still viable, pollinate the female bloom, and then again hope the process takes and forms a seed pod, and then wait before being able to harvest and then get it off into a lab to germinate. It is a massive undertaking, which is great if you have the facility to cultivate and store seeds. But thankfully, 
propagating via bulbs is much easier. But you can see how long this would take if I were now to pop the pollinia here, store it and then hope for the best for a next female blooming cycle. And unfortunately, the biggest downside of removing the pollinia from male blooms is they will fade super fast. So yeah, you can see how some have loosened of their own accord and the blooms are showing signs of age, even though they are only a week old. Female blooms also last much, much longer than male blooms. So being showy and being beautiful and smelling divine has its price as well. You can see that my blooms aren't as fresh as they were two days ago. But here's one that still has everything intact the way it should be. The sepals still have green and fresh at the tip. They're not showing any signs of dehydration and the petal also hasn't curled in as drastically as the other ones we've been looking at. You can see that the lip isn't as rigid and marked either as previous ones, but this is not going to take much longer and it is only because of their waxy texture that they're going to look fresher than they really, really are. But I am so glad I have myself a Jack of Diamond male blooming this time around. I have the comparison, same orchid, female and male blooms. In this configuration right now, she stands, the length of the bulb is approximately 20 centimeters. The width of the leaves are about 50 centimeters and the total span of the spike from one bloom to the outermost bloom as well is approximately 60 centimeters. If space is an issue during the winter months when this orchid blooms out, let me tell you, you wanna be prepared to accommodate the size. Once she drops her spikes and everything, I will be able to just put the bulbs away until such a time that I see new growth and the whole cycle starts again. And it will be, as it was in 2021, my aim to bloom this orchid out with female blooms again in spring, summer. The more female blooms that I get, the happier I am knowing that my orchid is a happy catacetum. I have really, really grown to love female blooms because it confirms to me that I am doing right by this orchid. It is, however, very nice to see the male blooms. Jan Vries, I hope I did your request justice. I can personally say I'm happy that it got to this point. Clearly, I've got an orchid in bloom. I hope that your question was answered. I got into a little bit more detail about it and to be able to compare between the female blooms and the male blooms on the same orchid. If there are any questions about this video, if I didn't explain something correctly on how I cultivate this orchid to get the female and then finally the male blooms, I've made a video about the basics of catacetinate care, which I will link in the description below, but I'm also very, very happy to answer any questions this video may have brought up and we can revisit them either in the comments or I will make another video, clear things up, explain things in greater detail, if that is something you would like me to do. Meanwhile, I'm getting knocked out by spearmint fragrance. I was hoping for a bee to come while I was talking so that we could actually see the process happening. I will not be ejecting any pollinia from my catacetum orchids. There are many, many videos on the interwebs showing how it's done. I really want to enjoy my male blooms because once I eject that pollinia, it's just going to collapse and it's taken me this long to have them and I'm just going to enjoy them to the max. Thank you so much for your time for watching. I hope that you're having a wonderful day. I would like to add a condition to that, that you stay safe and take care. Bye.